field where suddenly it just changed your world? You know what? There was one. Uh, Tell us the big fish story. Come on, here's the big fish story. Okay, are you guys familiar with the famous first editions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're the, there's these oversized, they're called treasuries, and they reprint Batman number one action. All the big books. Mm -hmm. And you know, you often get phone calls saying that they have this thing. And most of the time, it's the treasuries. <laughs> you know, because you give them a Q&A. Oh, I have action number one, I have Detective 27, the first Batman, the first Superman. And, and you know, well, then, and then after a while, you're seasoned, you know, you, you just know if they have it or not. Okay, how big is the book? Well, it's really big, and, you know, well, how big, what's the cover price? Oh, it's one dollar, you know. Right. So, you know, I go, well, but one time I got the real deal. It was a Detective 27 in a catheter box. <laughs> no, it was it was 27, it was 28, it was 35, the hypodermic needle cover, I don't know if you know that one. It was the first appearance of Rob, and the second appearance, I mean, this was the mother load. Now, I was kind of, at the time, I was, you know, first couple of years in my store, so I, I knew great, and I was a little out of my league in the gold range. So, and what I mean by that, out of my league, is that there are certain markets, there are certain books that you just throw the price right out the door. Mm -hmm. You know, like if a Detective 27 comes into you know, the first Batman and the price guy, you know, in the low grade says 25,000, you, you know, well now you know. So, this came into my store and I actually graded this box. And I gave them 50% of value. Um, I think Detective 27 at the time in the guide on the low end was like nine or ten thousand, right? So I bring it to a show, and Metropolis Comics, one of the biggest deals in the country, and at the time Showcase New England, Dan Greenhall was one of the they used to go neck and neck for being the biggest dealers, and obviously Metropolis took that title. They were after me, throwing crazy numbers at me. Like, oh, wait a minute. You know, this is, to me, this is, you know, a $10,000 book, and they're offering me 20, 25, and they're searching me down for it. So, so that was the fine, and it was, um, uh, when CGC first started, that's the comic rating company, they were soliciting us dealers, and, you know, Steve Barr, who was kind of the, the head guy at the time, he, you know, take us out to dinner and gave us like $500 gift certificate to submit. And I'm pretty sure that my detective was the first one they graded. Because my, my number was like 22 and then I used that certificate to get it submitted. So, so, so that's yeah. so, so it, it graded a 3 of, and I sold it and I regret selling it ever since. I sold it to a guy, um, his name is Jerry, He's, uh, he owns a series of bagel shops. He's a rock memorabilia collector. Now, it was in my personal collection. Somehow it got wind that I had one, and he had one, and he wanted to, he had to buy it for his, and he wanted to replace his with mine. So he made me an offer, and I actually sold it. I mean, if I had the book today, mm -hmm. in today's market, it's probably $150,000. It's, it's one of those, I pay off all my bills, and I read them the store, and right, right, right. You know, I go to Hawaii type of book. Right. <laughs> Jesse, how about you? What's your big fish? Uh, I wish I saw that. It's a hell of a story. No, that's a hell of a story. I had been collecting Spider-Man for a long time. He was my favorite from when I was a little kid. Uh, and I had managed to get all of the Spider-Mans, one up to the point they were up. And of course, it was missing Amazing Fantasy 15. Uh, when I was, I must have been five years old, I was walking down the street with my mother. Uh, and we passed this and this collectible shop, and there was an Amazing Fantasy 15 in the window. I didn't know that this was the find of all time or anything like that, but I saw an Amazing Fantasy 15 in the window with Spider-Man on. I was a Spider-Man fan. I said, "Mommy, can we get the Spider-Man comic?" And she leans over to the window. You know, this was a, they didn't sell back issues like crazy then. This was a long time. It was 1974. 
Uh, my mother looked at the Amazing Fantasy 15, first appearance ever of Spider-Man in the window, and she went, a comic book for $10? Forget it! <laughs> so, <laughs> so this story, <laughs> it wasn't actually, it was just on the right street. So, so this went down in family history, because my mother, as we later learned, had sidestepped buying the Amazing Fantasy 15 because it was $10, which even then was getting it for a steal. So when I was 21 years old, uh, 16 years after that had happened, my mother got the entire family to pitch in, and they bought me Amazing Fantasy number 15 for my 21st birthday. So I don't know if you can hold that. So why did they pay for it? Why did they pay for it? I never asked them either. I never asked them, but we know you, you know better than I know what it's worth. He's, he's right. But it's in his head right now. It's a good condition. It, it's, um, it's a, oh God, what is it, a 6.8? It's a 7.2. Um, 7.0 to 7.5. Is this great? Seven, seven point, seven point five. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, um, I can yeah. tell you what it's worth. I don't know. I have an idea. Can I tell everyone? It's probably worth anywhere from forty-five to fifty thousand. Which it was uh, not worth on my twenty-first birthday, mind you. You know, you know the sale of, of, the, of the million dollar ninety-six from uh, you know, that. That was yes, nine right. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's and the spider didn't hurt anything like that. So. And let's face it, although Amazing Spider-Man is, Amazing Fantasy is a lot more available, if you have money, you can buy it. Yes, right. It's not like action uh, comics. Even if you have money, you can't buy it because they they're not around. Right, right, right. They're right. Superman. But arguably, Spider-Man, you know, the, the biggest characters are Superman, Batman, and then Spider-Man. And arguably, if you took a poll, I, I'd be willing to say that. Spider-Man and Batman would be in that one two. Even even before Superman. But Superman started it also, he gets his two props. He needs know? a good he needs a good new movie and then he'll go back up again. Well, no, good. it's just one of those books that they just don't. I mean there's another one I was just reading on the chat boards. I don't know if you go to the CGC chat boards. There's um, the Nicolas Cage copy that just surfaced. Um, it was stolen. He, uh, Nicholas Cage had, was thrown at some kind of party back in 2000, and, he had, and his action comic and his Detective 27 were stolen. Um, they, you know, they were stolen. I think I, I forget when, but it just surfaced. Um, I, I don't know the whole story, but yeah. there's a picture of it, and it's going to come to market. And I would suspect it's probably going to break a million and a half like the last one. Right. Wow. Wow. It's probably you know. I'm sorry. No, no, it's probably going to break that record. Wow. It looks really nice. And it's not slab, so. Wow. Well, I'd like to open it up to the floor if we have any questions, sir. Uh, didn't Action Number One recently set the record at uh, about 1.5 million? Yeah, there, there was the Kansas City copy, which was an 8 0 that sold for a million. But there was another copy, I don't, I don't know, it doesn't have a pedigree designation or something. It's Surface that got an 8 5 that sold for a million and a half. So this would be the third one. I'm pretty sure the Nick Cage copy. You know, it's, I don't know the story how they found it, mm -hmm. but it surfaced, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be. Didn't they find it inside an old movie magazine? What the Nicolas Cage copy? No, no, the the one that went for 1.5. Right? I, I, you know, I don't know the story. I I, I probably read it and I forgot oh, about it, but. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. Someone found it in something. Isn't that the record of both Batman and Spider-Man? Yeah. Well, what happened, the, the, the chain of events was the Detective 27 from Heritage, Big Ultra House, they had a, um, took, it took the, they had like an 8.0 or an 8.5 that got a million, a million one, which beat the old Detective record. And then these, then these two actions surfaced and just, you know, took over the, you know, the Kansas City, which was an 8.0, that sold for a million, and this other copy that was an 8.5 sold for a million and a half, and this one's probably going to be too. Superman deserves to be the top of the heat for a little while. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty amazing that you guys are actually talking single, that, that the level of collection is that a single book is being floated around. And because the, the, if you're in the, in the, if you're in the business, uh -huh. these books don't surface. Right. And you, and I, I know a lot of these like guys. I mean, I'm not in the league, but they're, you know, San Diego having dinner with them and trying to keep it up. So, 
But um, and you know, you just I just know a lot of people over the years, and you, know, you, you kind of get the inside information on all that stuff. Yeah, like I say, or whatever, or something. Yeah. But, but because it's a comic book, everyone does the oh, two million dollars. Well, pop culture is the new yeah. culture. Yeah. Exactly. But they don't, you know, they, they're not out there. It's not that many. Go ahead. Sir, sorry. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether. Um, what are your thoughts about the CGC like, uh, business? Because, um, as I understand it, the only way to get a 10.0 or 9.8 rating is not to read the comic book. It's just like um, to buy it on the shelf and or open it off, fresh off the box and just send it off for like, uh, some chest way. It's just like a piece of the purpose of comic book in the first place. There, there's a place for it. Yeah. Here's why. Like Jesse has an amazing fantasy good team. Mm -hmm. He's got a spider man number one. Now, for a fraction, you know, for, for $50, $50, he can send that to CGC, have it graded, and if ever comes a time where he would like to sell it, there's no back and forth, like, let's say, me. Well, just, you know, I don't think it's a 7 to 5, I think it's a 6 5. And he gets a restoration check, and if he wants to read it, for God's sake, it's amazing fantasy, he's reprinted a hundred times, a million times. He can always read the story, he doesn't have to read. So there's a place for it. Um, on, on that end, but as far as the moderns, people like, you know, you know, people like it, they like, they like to display it, they like the way it looks, and you can read it, you can buy, you know, so there's a place for, you know, for the collectors, it's not for everyone, and not everyone likes it, you know, so there is, there is a, there is a place for it, I do it, I, I don't do it a lot, but I do it, you know, if I think there's a modern cover that just looks like, I don't know, investing, the new Caligula cover. Oh, yeah. It's so gruesomely bizarre, but it's kind of one of those novelties. Wow, I should get that slam. <laughs> I know it's sick, but there's certain covers that just, you know, wow. Oh, I cool. know you. How are you doing? Hey, what's up, man? Sir? Oh, uh, well, <clears throat> first of all, uh, can you tell us something about a collective of newspaper comic strips on coming pages? And uh, can you tell us something about the uh, uh, personality of the, the guys who collect the million dollar comic books uh, and, and some stories about their, their personalities? Like, what, what, what are they like? Well, the guys who collect the million dollar comic, I don't know their personalities, but obviously there's someone who's very successful mm -hmm. that. Um, <laughs> Like me and Jesse. We grew up loving the comics. Nicholas Cage, you know what his real name is? Coppola. He, he's part of the Coppola family, Nicholas Cage. And the reason he changed his name because he didn't want his, you know, he didn't want his uncle to pull strings or he wanted to do it on his own. And his name comes from Luke Cage, Power Man. So he was a collector of comics. He just happens to be a guy like me and Jesse with a lot of money. So he'll buy it. And, you know, Mark Hamill. Luke Skywalker, Leonardo DiCaprio collects comics, um, Crazy Sheehan collects, you know. So these guys bring up, you know, if you've got a bunch of rich guys going after the same, you know. And it's cool because why? You know, you know, rich guys, like, you know, they, they were young too, reading comics, and they, they're attracted to it just like Jesse and I, and you guys are, so. Uh, and as far as, um, what was the other question? Newspaper comics. Uh, Once upon a time, strips were, were valuable, you know, but with the advent of the internet, you can get them, and they're not that expensive. You can get, you you can buy, you can get 40s and 50s of Superman strips, pretty cheap, maybe ten dollars, fifteen dollars. It depends. Some of them are more. Uh, the ones that get more money are the Will Eisner weekly inserts. Right. Yeah. Those those are more collectible. But you mean you mean ten dollars for one day? Or or Sunday might get you know more. It depends on. Hal Force's Viking Prince, or, or, or well, the, you know, the, you know, the guys, or Hallgard's Tarzan, you know, could come in. It depends on, you know, those guys were really, you know, especially Hal uh, kind of Force's. Well, the original art, I know, is good. Oh, the original, original art, forget it. They've been they around uh, $30,000. Uh, yeah. And you know, some original artists, that whole collecting yeah. deal yeah. to itself as it well. absolutely is. is. Yeah, because the, the difference with the, with the original comic art, it's one of a kind. Sure. No one else can own it. It's the actual board that the artist, you know, penciled and then was inked. It's no one else can have it. Now, there's a lot of them out there, so there's certain, you know, you, 
you define the, like let's say if you had an amazing Spider-Man. Now if Peter Parker's in every panel, it's not going to sell as much as the next page that has Spider-Man in, in constant fighting the Punisher. It's just, right. you know, you know, one will be two hundred dollars or a hundred fifty dollars even, and the other one will be you know two thousand just because Spider-Man's in every panel. And you can have a Commandy or a Western Jack Kirby from the fifties that you can buy for a couple hundred bucks, but then you get a splash page of Galactus, and now you got fifty thousand. <laughs> you know. It's like, it's like when you're buying uh, those when you buy animated cells and you get an animated get cell that. and it's like it's an arm. arm. It's just like yeah, it's, it's like, like a little, little I don't thing. get that. Yeah. But um, I don't get that. It, it's you know, each frame is yeah. nice. But art is like one of a kind and, 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 and you know what? And it, it's it's starting to get its it's the comic book artists are starting to get their fair shake, but they still have it. I'd like to see Picasso do a thirty two page in a deadline. Draw like Jack Kirby. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'd like to see him draw a 32 page book and do it in, you know, or crank out background panel. Yeah, earlier we saw it. Yeah. I'm sure if Jack, you give Jack Kirby a month to do a, an image, you could do it. Well, actually, yeah. earlier today, no, she, she grinds out a page a day. Yeah. A page a day, which is crazy. So, uh, we'll, do, we'll do, was that a question? Or? Yeah, I had a question. Okay. Is there a market for collecting manga? Uh, or do I don't think so. Uh, it's a big market, especially in Japan. Uh, in New York, I mean, corporations in Japan in Japan do their quarterly reports, manga style. I mean, it's huge. I think 25% of all book sales in Japan I, are manga. I just read that yesterday huge. that there is more paper being used for manga in Japan than toilet paper. Yeah. Oh my wow. So, 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 so possibly wow. an actual business. But it's more of a, it's more of a, 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 a reading thing. And I don't, I don't really know if, if let's say, I don't know, Venus Wars from the late 80s or, or Outlanders or something um, commands, you know, the Dark Horse stuff or even, um, you know, some of it is, uh, some of the this stuff, like uh, Sanctuary. I mean, there is a market, um, but I don't know how lucrative the back issue market is on it. You know? And it's still within the comic book collector market. Yeah, it's, it's, it's totally right? different. I mean, it's I, I draw it manga in my store, and I can't move it really. I'm sorry. It, it doesn't have its own infrastructure yet, manga collecting, on comic collecting. You know? Well, they're going to pay for it. No, no, $50 on a you know, yeah, that yeah. thing of. No, no, I mean, I mean for older issues. Right? Yeah, I don't know. Well, it seems to me like everything that's been published in the U.S. for manga has been published with the intention of it's going to do well. It's already been done well and that kind of thing, and it's not. It doesn't work as well for the uh, for stuff like we find. You know, who the hell knew that Amazing Spider-Man number one was going to be where that's what it was, you know? So, um, I think we've got time for one more question. Sir? Because uh, you were talking about Nick Cage before. Do you know what he named his son? No, uh -huh. no, I don't. What is, what is his name? Kel El. Yeah? They named him Kel El. Yeah. 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 Yeah.